you are being targeted by APAC, a pro-Israel group. Yeah. They've said that they are going to spend millions in your district. Um, you Do you think you're getting the support that you want from the Democratic Party in this race? Yes. Uh, so far, yes. And we're going to get a lot more support um, going forward. You know, APAC, unfortunately, has shown itself to be a racist organization, an organization that's supporting the genocide in Gaza right now. And my opponent is partnering with them, even though the majority of their donors are MAGA racist Republicans trying to take our voting rights, trying to take reproductive rights, gutting affirmative action and supporting fascism. Okay. You just heard Representative Jamal Bowman call out APAC for being the right-wing, racist, genocide-supporting organization that it is. And they're a lot like the NRA in the sense that they're able to buy off politicians to get them to be complicit with the deaths of children. But unlike the NRA, they've actually been able to capture both parties. And that includes insurrectionist Republicans who they've endorsed. Now, they defended that move, saying that their support for Israel is more important than every other issue. And that means that... They don't really care about American democracy. To hell with American democracy. If you're going to defend our apartheid ethno state, we'll have your back. If you're going to cheerlead for us while we commit an ethnic cleansing and a genocide in Gaza, we'll back you up. That's all we care about. Now, I wouldn't necessarily expect lobbying groups of foreign governments in particular to care about U.S. democracy, but American politicians, at least in theory, should care. Democrats in particular should care and disavow an organization lending support to politicians that pose a threat to our entire country. But they apparently couldn't care less. And I say this because if you go to APAC's website, you see the full list of Republicans and Democrats that they're supporting. And this includes Democratic Party leadership as well as Republican leadership. So on one hand, Democrats, you know, they rightfully call out the threat MAGA Republicans pose to democracy and reproductive rights and LGBTQ rights. Yet they're proudly accepting the endorsement of an organization helping to elect those very same Republicans that they've warned us all about. And you might even see your senator or representative on this list as well, because most of Congress is bought off by APAC. The moral thing to do would be to have some fucking standards and reject APAC's endorsement if you're a Democrat. Demand that they withdraw their endorsement of insurrectionist Republicans or ice them out. No more meetings with APAC lobbyists, no more joint fundraisers, nothing. The Democratic Party should give them the same treatment that they give to the NRA, not only because they support insurrectionist Republicans, but more importantly, because APAC is an organization that supports mass murder and genocide. So if you're against the NRA because of what they facilitate, you are a hypocrite if you support a different organization that does the same thing, but on a bigger scale. Now, like good little stooges, Democrats aren't doing that. They are instead holding hands and singing kumbaya with right-wing fascists who want to turn the United States into Gilead. Why? Because they at least agree on supporting genocide. We stand with Israel. 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 Very normal government we have, right? Listen, if you want our politicians to be as passionate about helping you as they are about assisting a foreign government with their genocide, sorry, but you've got to be rich enough to buy off a politician or two or maybe start a lobbying firm. Otherwise, they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to care. They know that you're struggling to afford housing and health care, but... To them, it's more important that we use that money that they could be using to help you to buy more bombs for Israel so they can drop them on the heads of children. That comes first. Sorry, die mad. Literally. That's their response to us. It's genuinely despicable. And what Jamal Bowman and other progressive members of Congress are doing and calling out APAC is a public service. That association needs to become toxic for Democratic Party politicians. And each and every single one of them needs to be named and shamed until they remove their lips from APAC's teeth. Anytime they call out the NRA's hold on the Republican Party, 
we need to call out their hypocrisy and throw APAC in their face because they're doing the same fucking thing that they were accusing Republicans of doing. Anytime that they call out the threat that Republicans pose to democracy, we need to remind them that they're collaborating with the organization that is propping up American fascists. For too long, the Democratic Party has gotten away with shameless corporatism and neoliberalism, and that's bad enough, but we should draw the line when it comes to genocide. Their outright support for genocide should not be tolerated, and the base needs to stand up. Confront your representative and your senator if they are guilty here. Because, you know, when they get in bed with APAC, they're getting in bed with the same people like Nikki Haley, for example, who's going full Nazi in her support for Israel's genocide, which Jamal Bowman also addressed in that interview. I want to show you what um, Nikki Haley, the former Republican presidential candidate, what she wrote on such bombs as we've been discussing. These are uh, bombs that uh, presumptively would be used in Rafah. She signed, finish them yeah. on the rocket. What's your response to that? Nikki Haley is disgusting. She's a disgusting human being to do that. That's genocidal language. And it's the language that has the American people turning against our government. Why do we continue to support not just the consistent attacks in Gaza, but the forever wars. There are people in our country their entire lives, me included, seems like we're constantly at war with someone, spending trillions, killing millions, while people are suffering and starving and dying right here in our country. That is gross, that is disgusting, and Nikki Haley should be ashamed of herself. Yeah. I mean, the level of dehumanization of Palestinians that we're seeing from our politicians is reminiscent of Nazi Germany. We're talking about human life here. And American politicians are flippantly writing, finish them on bombs that she knows are going to kill innocent civilians in Rafa. It is despicable. There are no words to describe how gross people like that are. But I mean, Nikki Haley is one of many politicians that feels the same way in both parties. And Jamal Bowman is right that that kind of shit is exactly why the American people, particularly young people, are turning against our government. There's a poll from Semaphore that they published that found that young people view America as a dying empire led by bad people. And that's so right. And seeing this poll was really cathartic, not because like, you know, I'm overly cynical, but because it's nice to know that other people see through the United States' bullshit and the media's propaganda, right? And it's not just young people that aren't buying the bullshit. It's also older people too. A lot of people are waking up and realizing that, we are the baddies. We're the bad guys. This lie that we've been told that we're the good guys and we can do no wrong, it's bullshit. We are the bad guys and most of the world rightfully views us as the bad guys because of what we're doing, because of what we've been doing before we were born and currently. But rather than condemning people like Nikki Haley and that genocidal behavior, Democrats choose to condemn student protesters instead and call out the people who are against genocide Instead, for example, look at what Jill Biden said about student protesters on The View. I think that, you know, people do have the right to protest. I mean, that's why we have a democracy. Thank God we, have, we live in a democracy. But I think that the protests have to be peaceful, peaceful. Why would we be violent? What is the point of the violence? I mean, aren't we, aren't they really protesting the violence yeah. with violence? I mean, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy, but if my husband was complicit with a genocide and giving bombs to a fascist that I knew he was using on children, I would keep my mouth shut about other people being violent, right? I mean, how dare you condemn anyone else's violence when you're married to Joe Biden? If you care about violence, tell your husband to stop supporting a fucking genocide. The audacity of these people. See, that hypocrisy right there is why we fucking hate the establishment. If she actually cared about violence, she wouldn't be married to one of the most violent human beings on the planet. He's doing a genocide. And you're saying that the people telling him to stop are the ones that are violent. Do you understand how absurd you look, Jill Biden? But I mean, on that note, Bowman's condemnation of U.S. support for Israel's genocide is another reason why AIPAC is trying to defeat him, because he's saying what they don't want you to hear. Case in point. The U.S. government should not be sending another weapon to Israel right now. We should not be sending another dime to Israel right now, period. And the president said his red line was Rafa. That red line was crossed. We need to stop sending weapons, period. It matters. Like, I don't want my taxpayer money going to commit genocide. Mm -hmm.
I want my taxpayer money coming here to help me have child care, to help me pay for my housing, mm-hmm. to help me, you know, develop myself in terms of workforce, to help me pay for education, transportation, quality of life. We have the biggest wealth inequality in this country since the Gilded Age, right now. And in my district, when you look at every outcome, health outcomes, uh, education outcomes, economic outcomes, wealth, black and Latino people are at the bottom. Blacks way bottom. And so that money that we spend on genocide Mm -hmm. can come here to help us. Yeah, I mean, if you're wondering why he's a top target of APAC, that right there is why. And he also reiterated that point in the interview that he did with Abby Phillips, specifically saying that Biden has to respond to Israel's Rafa massacre. When you when you look on social media, we are U.S. weapons are burning infant children alive. And so he has to respond. We cannot send another weapon or another dollar to Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu at this point because they have been moving forward with what the ICJ has called a plausible genocide. And everyone sees it. My district sees it. The country sees it. And we have to stop and we need a permanent ceasefire. Now, what he's saying there is obvious to anyone who's been paying attention. But I want to expand a little bit on the point that he's making, because we now have confirmation that Israel used U.S. bombs to carry out their massacre in Rafah. Now, I'm not surprised by this, and nobody should be surprised by this if they've been paying attention. It's not like they're using other people's bombs to murder innocent Palestinians. But that evidence right there is devastating for the fact that the Biden administration would violate U.S. domestic law if it were the case that those weapons that were giving to an ally was being used in violation of international humanitarian law, which one would think bombing a refugee camp when they're sleeping would be a violation of that, right? Because if we give them the bombs, they've got to be in compliance with international humanitarian law. That right there is proof they're not. In other words, Biden is breaking the law by continuing to send them weapons. But of course... He's going to keep doing it because he's a sick fuck. He's a monster. Now, in all fairness, the Biden administration has thankfully decided to not work with Republicans to sanction the ICC after Blinken initially signaled that they would do that. So, I mean, that's good at least. But it's basically the lowest bar ever. But (laughs) that's where we're at, where it's good news that the Democratic administration is announcing that they're not going to work with Republicans after all to sanction the International Criminal Court. What a twisted, sick reality we're all living in. But American and international sentiment is turning against Israel and the United States because of what's happening. And politicians like Jamal Bowman are using their voices to facilitate that paradigm shift that's long overdue, which is why right-wing organizations like AIPAC want to destroy him. So this race against a right-wing Democrat in his district is really important. APAC specifically recruited George Latimer, Jamal Bowman's opponent, to run against him. And unfortunately, that race is going to be really close. So consider sending him a couple of bucks because he's going to need every single penny. I'll link to that to that down below. But like, long story short, support Jamal Bowman. What he's saying here is really important. And we need more truth tellers like that in Congress and less bullshitters like George Latimer.